episode number, I want to say eight, but it's nine now, right? It's nine. Yep. Wow. Episode nine. So we have a special, special thing in store. As we were preparing for this, Brian, I was going back through and listening to some older episodes, some of our first episodes, because we're doing a recap today and bringing our Mm -hmm. guests back, almost like a little reunion of sorts. Hey, how's it Mm -hmm. going? Kind of a deal. And I just want to say, Brad, I'm grateful that I feel like we are bonding in our relationship over this Absolutely. podcast. And I hope that as y'all are listening, that you're feeling that we're, we're trying to improve our craft on here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, hey, we're putting in the work behind the scenes, too. We're talking a lot. And, you know, I'm trying to do what I'm, we're suggesting on the show for my personal game, too. And it, it's starting to pay off a little bit. But, yeah, we're... We're putting in a lot of effort for you all, and thank you all for all the messages I get from Foundation, you know, even people I'm helping correct orders or do some stuff there or coming into the store. It means a ton when you, you know, have all the kind feedback that you do, and Robbie's pretty cool. I feel like we're actually helping some people think about their bag and think about their game, so that's that, that, that's all you. I'm just a guy behind uh, the camera in, in the field throwing discs and making a fool of himself. That's all you. Hey, and I, I just want to say I, I am getting a lot of messages as well, and I, I wish that we had the time to basically just record every day because with how many people are requesting to be on here, we are so grateful for each and every one of you listening. Uh, and there's just sadly not enough time in the day or the week, uh, but hopefully this podcast sticks around a long time and we'll be able to get as many of you here as possible. So uh, yeah, I would just start grateful that you're continuing to listen. And if there's things we can do to improve, please let us know. And we're grateful for your support. Speaking of support, let's talk about today's video sponsor. All right. Today's episode is sponsored by Legacy Discs. Thank you, Legacy Discs. Legacy Discs is bringing back the Confidence Clash in July. Pretty exciting. I didn't know that about this, Robbie. I don't know if you did. The Confidence Clash is a fun way to run a three disc challenge style event in your area and be able to raise funds for your local cub or course and also your club. Oh. Player's pack includes two premium discs, one baseline putter of the host choice, along with a legacy towel and sticker sheet. In addition to the player's pack, winners will receive a very nice winner's pack as well. So that's a lot of discs. That's so many um, Frisbees. Yeah. For more information about the Clash and how to run and participate in this event, please visit LegacyDiscs.com slash CC2. That's LegacyDiscs.com slash Charlie, Charlie, two, two. And remember, play with confidence. I the trilogy challenge, uh, confidence clashes, the circuit challenge, like ace race. I love love those challenges. They are so mm-hmm. excellent, and I think it's a fantastic way to try out legacy. So definitely make sure you try out a confidence clash twenty two. Confidence clash twenty two. All right, Brad. So today's episode, we have been recommending discs and talking about so many different options for the last two months. And what we wanted to do was make sure that we're not just recommending stuff out there that we get to see like, are we, is it actually working? Is it actually helpful? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to just keep doing this and think that we're doing a good job if we're not actually helping people. Yeah. I'm the same way, Robbie. So excited to bring people on, hear that feedback. But the what the the biggest constant that we have between every episode is that I am making Brad go to a field and throw discs every single time. So Brad, I would love to hear before we bring in our first guest or our first reunion guest, what has been one of your biggest takeaways from this podcast so far? I tell you what, if I could maybe say two. If that's okay. Game time. I th- and because I think the big one, the first one's big, but it's very broad. And, you know, I came in with a vi- like a very fixed mindset on disc golf and like a one manufacturer bag. And if I do this and I only use these and I'm going to be good at disc golf. Right. I think the biggest lesson I've learned is be flexible. Don't be, af- be afraid to try new plastic. Don't be afraid to try shots you're not good at. Don't be afraid to try courses that you think are too hard. Um, I think that's the biggest takeaway I've had. And then, you know, I guess from a like technical or a game standpoint, it's, you know, lean into your strengths as a disc golfer, even if you're new, Um, but use those strengths to develop the parts of your game that you're not so great at. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I'm, again, I've been fine at upshots and putter, like throwing putters and things like that. That's the episodes I got excited about. Um, But there's like practical things I can apply to like my Annie shots that I weren't, I wasn't so good at. And now I've developed now and even you know that fairway slot that I wasn't great at I've used the technique and the form and like kind of the thought process from the 
lower speeds of my bag to uh, apply to those areas of my bag and they've started to develop as well so i think it's like you know keep an open mind and don't be afraid to throw plastic and if you're not good at a, a, a shot yet or a type of shot or a course then that's okay you know lean on the things you're good at get better at those things and the rest will come because you'll be able to have some subconscious confidence i'm going to use your word robbie um from the lower speeds in your bag in my case that you can kind of transfer over and some of the lessons learned into the higher speed parts of your bag or more complex shots and that will really transfer there so those are really my big two takeaways robbie come on yeah that is i mean i love it i love that i love that we're seeing your game develop throughout all of this. And I'll be honest, my game is developing right alongside of it, just as I'm asking people to try those discs out. And there's some of them that I realized I was recommending to people and I haven't thrown them in a while. So it's been a fun process of getting back out there and trying discs as well. So I am excited to hear from our guests and hear if they're if they're in the same boat as us, so they're improving, or man, did we totally whiff? Let's hope so. Let's Come hope on. so. So we are going to bring in our first guest from episode one, Jason Collins. Let's jump in. Mr. Jason Collins retired, and the beard is looking something fierce. It's flush. Love it. I feel like if you're going to be on the In the Bag podcast, I felt like an outcast for a couple weeks because my beard was gone. So Brad has been holding it strong for us. And we're just trying to, uh, I believe you said before we dive, dove in, Jason, we're playing catch up, right? Right. Awesome. Well, you had some big life change. We mentioned it, retirement, and you have moved across the country. And where are you at now? I'm actually now in Lynchburg, Virginia. Well, officially Forest, Virginia, which is right outside of Lynchburg. Let's go. Just a few miles from uh, Atlas, a few miles from Foundation. My home course is actually uh, is, is, uh, New London. I'm three miles, about six minutes from New London. Uh, so it's a pretty good place to be for sure. Wow. So you're telling me that when I come up to visit, because I feel that I'm obligated to be up there to record <laughs> multiple episodes of In the Bag mm -hmm. in person, you're telling me that you're going to show me around New London and you're going to be shooting like 12 down? Easy? I won't I won't be pulling a hunter with the all, G <laughs> ro all gyro bag. Um, but I've, I've shot twice and I went 11 over on shorts, right? The very long amateur tees. Yeah. I went 11 over and then 8 over and I was ecstatic. Like I don't know if I could have shot any better those days. So I was ecstatic to go 11 over my first round and then 8 over my second round. So that was pretty fun. Come on. Yeah. Is that How does that feel, Brad? You, that, you know the course is way better than me. The, my best round's uh, nine over there, so you beat me, Jason. So I'm, gu I'm guessing you're playing some smart golf, so that's what will happen there. I'm trying to play, right? I, I don't have the, the, the accuracy to try to go long on those tunnel shots, so I just try to throw my envy a lot because there's such a – throw my putter a lot for sure. So That is awesome. Well, hey, when we had you on what feels like ages ago, but a mere two months ago, we recommended a couple options for you, and I want to walk through those options – uh, we recommended that you were, you loved your DX Valkyrie. So we said, Hey, why don't you get the Valkyrie in a multitude of plastics? And then we talked about a slot in your bag that we didn't think you had a disc for. And we put a Raptor in there. Does that, is that right? Yep. That is correct. Okay. So talk us through how have those discs been flying for you? The multitude of plastics for the Valkyrie and the Raptor. Okay. Well, I'll jump to the Raptor first. Cause I'll be totally transparent. Like we messaged beforehand. I put the Raptor in there and, and along with the consistent fade, like we talked about what one of the good things is it's always going to dive left at the end. So that's a good thing. And so I've kept it in there, but I, I can't, can, I, I don't have the skill set yet, even with many, multiple field sessions to get that Anheuser flex shot. I just don't have it yet. I, I throw almost everything on Heiser. I pretty much throw everything on Heiser. So working towards that Anheuser, even the flat Anheuser, I just wasn't consistent enough. So I didn't have good results with that more for my skill set than anything else. So the, so the Raptor, I still keep a single Raptor in there for those times when I know I need that that can, that reliable dive at the end. Mm. Uh, but I don't use it for anything else yet. I'm still working on my forehand, so I haven't messed around too much with my forehand. But it's it stays in the bag because it's good for that consistent fade. Um, but then other than that, I don't do the long flex shot with it. Okay. That's totally, totally fair. Now, now the Valkyrie has been great. So I ordered uh, the ones I ended up getting were Star. I got a single Star. These are all factory seconds. A Star, a G Star, a Pro, um, a Glow, and then and a few more DXs because they were getting beat up. I just wanted to try all. That's basically a, and then Champion, 
And then I tried to, as every plastic they had available because they're, you know, they're reasonably priced in the factory second store. So that was good to be able to buy that main disc at once. Um, the DX ones, as, as expected, when they're brand new for me, they fly really good and straight. But the more they get beat in, they start moving right really quick, okay. even with my hyzer throw and kind of flat throw. But, but it's good because I now that is now my kind of fade right shot. If I, if I overturn it, I can actually make it go really far right, but I'm comfortable enough with my two beat-in ones. I have a purple one or a pink one that are pretty beat-in, that if I need a little turn to the right and that will just continue to go right, um, that's that's now my disc for that. I don't use it for too much other of those things. The Champion, it I don't think I ever really liked the Champion plastic, and it just slips out of my hand, mm -hmm. right? If I, I, if I never had consistent results with it. I could do some good shots in the field and it go really, really far. Like I was, I mean, hitting my normal distance of like 320 to 330 on the really long shots when I grip it and feel comfortable within a rel relative range. But then it all sometimes it slip out of my hand as well. So the champion is, is not in my bag at all because it just didn't, I wasn't comfortable with it in my hand. The star um, for me is definitely a Valkyrie that consistently will finish left for me like i oh. if i mess around i can maybe turn it over but it's my consistent left shot look if i if i want to go a little distance because i'm comfortable with it but no it's going to turn as it goes it's my it's my star valkyrie and then my g star is actually my flex shot i started practicing the anheuser on that to try to do the flex and it was actually one i actually parked and i can't remember what hole it is i think it's hole 12 at new london where you kind of got to go right it's a par three and you kind of got to go right around some trees and there's a little tree up there left and i tried the flex and i parked it to like four feet and i was like it actually did what i wanted to do it was amazing um but that was my my g star so i've done it thrown a few more times and when i can this what you were trying to have me do with the raptor i can actually do with my g star okay. um uh valkyrie and then the, the, the pro was, was hit or miss on consistency. It was the disc that went the furthest. If I caught it right on a yeah. good, mostly flat throw, because I don't have a lot of good flipped up, but flat with a natural disc. Um, most of my stuff just stays on that kind of hyzer line. But if I got it right, it would go the furthest. So if I have an open space, that's kind of my distance driver for me yeah. is, the, is, the, is the pro. And then, and then I just, I didn't, the first few times I threw the glow, it, it which feels like a DX. I don't know much about any of a glow plastic. It feels like a harder DX to me in the hand. So I like the way it felt. So I, I like the way DX feels. But I've been throwing it the last actually since I've been here, and it's my longest. It, it's it's replaced my DX as my long disc that's relatively straight that kind of turns up. Not really turns, but with the hyzer shot, it kind of turns left because I'm naturally throwing it that way. But it's not going to dive left if that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, my my DX glow has replaced my. I don't know if it's DX glow. My glow has replaced my DX ones. It's just my shot, my straight. I know if I a little bit to the right on some of the tunnel shots for 280 to 300, that's my comfortable one. So I went through those really fast. But every one of them, I have to to answer possibly a question or to at least get to the point we talked about beforehand. They all have a purpose, yeah. right? So um, for me, at least right now, they all have a purpose. Yeah, and we had talked about there's a world where we, if you lean into the Valkyrie enough do you still find yourself throwing a passion at all or has the Valkyrie yep. kind of covered all those slots? It's, I took the passion out mostly to mentally focus on it. So I can't say that it's a hundred percent replaced it. Cause I haven't brought the passion back in a while. Um, and if I brought it back, maybe it would, it would come and kind of stick in there, but I, I don't miss the passion. Awesome. I don't think, well, if I really had the passion, maybe I could make this shot. Cause I even, uh, and Robbie, you know, this one, a uh, peach city disc golf course, um, there's a, there's a few on the whole five where you cross the, 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 the water. That's where I threw a pro one day and it just, I mean, it's the first, I didn't get across the water, but I was in perfect landing for just a little easy shot up to the, to the, for the par four, because that's where I would normally throw a passion wide open field. It's going to kind of go left a little bit, you know, to get the Mando tree. And I, and I pulled out the pro and just knew I could gun it and catch it right. And that was normally my passion place for that. Cause I could throw the passion for so right now I'm not missing the passion and I'm not planning on replacing the Valkyries I have in there with the passion. So to answer your question, I guess it has for the time being replaced it. Yeah. No. The multiple plastics for sure. That's incredible. And I think that kind of answers, first off, I want to talk about like real briefly, uh, Brad, I know we mentioned before, you are much more of like a champion type plastic guy than a star plastic type guy. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's very interesting to me, the more people play and whatnot, like that preference is so evident while you're there because 
you, if I'm not wrong, you have the same feeling of when you throw that star plastic, that slip out of your hand feel, Brad. Yeah, it, it's like it changes, like I guess with the the spot in my bag, right? So I prefer like a baseline throwing regular putter, throwing putter, uh, even up through my mids and maybe that fairway slot. But when I get to like distance drivers, I love an ESP or like a more premium plastic. But I, I feel like it's like a little gummy so I can dig my hands into it, if that makes mm. sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it definitely changes for me on like the, the type of disc. Like I do not like premium plastic throwing putters of any kind because, you know, and even when I threw the Mako, if we recall that episode, I didn't love it. Uh, the champion plastic in the Mako or the star plastic, I'm sorry. I preferred the champion there, but on another episode, I preferred the champion over star. I guess it depends on the shot that I'm throwing. Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, all right. So w- one of our questions is going to be is, uh, does the disc plan on staying in your bag? And it sounds like Jason that it, it, you do plan on keeping those Valkyries and even the Raptor for that rare circumstance in the bag. So our final question, and I, you've touched on it, but I want to try to phrase it a little differently. The initial question would be, uh, does this disc suggestion, has it opened your eyes to other options or has it even just opened up options in your game in general? Like, has it originally opened options for, hey, now I can throw this shot because I have this disc? Or maybe this isn't the right disc, but we have the options. And I, I just want to lean into that. You said that you were, we initially suggested the Raptor for those flex lines, but you're throwing the G star. Yeah. So the G-Star. talk me through that process. Like, was it, was it going to the field and spending a lot of time working it? And you were like, this makes sense. It just doesn't feel like the right disc or what? So the, the, the process, at least for the Raptors, we kind of mentioned, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't get the flex shot that, that I see other folks do. Um, and so that it, it from a, I probably a couple of field sessions, I did it and every once in a while I tried again, but it just, it never could consistently do it enough where I would be comfortable throwing it actually out on the course. Um, and the Valkyrie, whereas the Valkyrie, from the moment I got out there, even the, at the beginning, the champion was, was okay for me. So I was going along with it, but the more I threw it, the more inconsistent it was out of my hand. Uh, and it's funny when Brad talks about the, the, the star plastic, to me, the star plastic feels gummy. So going to, going to Robbie's point, like just the, to me, my hand just sticks in star a little bit more than, than an ESP. So it is funny how we're each, each genetically different or biologically different. So rather, uh, but to go to the question that it's opened up two things, right? It's definitely showed me that some of the disc I had in my bag, I wasn't trying to do those shots yeah. with them, if that makes sense. All right, Robbie, looks like we got one of three positive response. So that that's good. I'm excited to see the rest. Uh, you know, Jason mentioned the uplink, which I'm, it did make it in my bag. I threw it very poorly, but at the last weekly that we had here at foundation and, uh, uh, I don't know, man, like my discs are changing already. Like the way I, I guess I think it's just my arm speed. Maybe things are getting a little bit more flippy than they were even several weeks ago. So, um, anyway, we might have to do a recap episode of my bag. We'll do like okay. a, what yeah. it was before, what it is now. And, uh, we'll see. I, I think I need some more suggestions. So I'm looking forward to the, it's been two weeks since I've had to throw discs and I'm, I'll be honest, I'm kind of missing it, you know? So I need another disc like the uplink, I think maybe a little more stable this time. Um, I did throw uh, a Nebula, by the way. Uh, okay. Shout out to Ledgestone. I wouldn't have thrown it if Ledgestone didn't drop them. Uh, it's an overstable mid. We talked about it last week, but I was looking for that overstable mid spot. That's kind of like a buzz, but more overstable. Yeah. Uh, feels very similar to a buzz, and it it was beautiful. It gives me a nice a little bit of turn, so it'll go a little right for me, and then a consistent fade every time at the end, and I can throw it pretty far. So. Dude, anyway, awesome. I digress. Uh, I, I think what we have Sean next, right? We We're do talk about the uplink a little bit. Talking about the mid ranges. Let's bring Sean in. All right. Sean McCormick in the building, in the car. I, what I really am enjoying about this, like seeing people again is our first guest has moved across the country and I was excited to see if people would be in similar settings. So Sean in the OG interview format that we had mm-hmm. with you, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Just at the office, caught me on a little 15-minute break, <laughs> so going good. Hi. 
Come That's on. Well, we are grateful for you jumping in with us. Grateful to have you recap. We suggested when you came on, we were talking about it before. We suggested the uplink. And then the other one was the fuse that we were like going back and forth was. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So you had an uplink. It got to you. So our first question, how has the uplink been flying for you? It's fantastic. The way that you and Brad described it is 100% accurate. It's the most sensitive disc I own by far, which is mm -hmm. a, <laughs> it's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that with how sensitive it is, I'm learning to be very touchy with it and that's affecting every mm -hmm. other aspect of my game. But the fact mm -hmm. that it's so sensitive, it's also really tough to get used to it. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it flies perfect. Just, you don't have to put a lot of power on it, maybe 60%. And then it flies beautifully. Okay. And yep. did, I know what we were talking about was replacing. You had an origin yep. in your bag, I believe, right? Perfect. And it was like crazy beat in, yep. super old. Is it similar in flight to what your origin was? It's the exact same. Perfect. Perfect. That is awesome. Yep. Okay. Awesome. That is definitely what we like to hear. So the follow-up question being... Do you think the uplink will stay in your bag or will you be changing it out for a disc of like a similar type that maybe a little more stable? What it, are you thinking? It hasn't left my bag since I got it. Uh, I, use, I throw it all the time, even forehand shots like Brad, how he said, you know, at first it was kind of tough to get used to it. But after a while, mm. if you learn how to flick it, it's, it's butter. It's really good. Come on. Well, yep. yeah, go ahead, Brad. No, yeah, I was just telling Robbie before you jumped in. I, you know, I I break it out every once in a while, and I was throwing it so poorly at our, my weekly last week. But that's exactly what it is, and I know why I was throwing it poorly. It's not the disc's fault. I was trying to, you know, like you said, it's like a sixty percent power disc. If you put seventy percent power in it, it's going to dive. It is not going to be happy with you. You have to treat it like your spouse. You have to treat it with love. You have to be tender with it. Come on. Yep, you got to. You got to baby it. And, uh, you know, it's it's good for me, Robbie, to hear everybody come on. Sean, you just, like, made me fall in love with it again, reminded me why I love the uplink so much. Because, honestly, I was just, like, so disappointed with it after last week. I was like, this stupid disc. I can't believe I ever, ever recommended this to anybody. And uh, since your episode, I've recommended it to, like, 30 people that have been in a, in and out of the shop. And it's been – we can't keep them in stock here. So um, I was like, have I led these people astray? And – Thank you for reminding me, Sean, that I just need to baby it a little bit. I'm trying to hit it too hard. I'm trying to make the disc do something instead of let the disc be itself. So mm. thank you for reminding me about that. I'm going to go out into the field and give it some love that it deserves here after a while. So thank you for that. Hi. That is awesome. Uh, Sean, our last question for you, and you kind of touched on this, and I'd love to hear you elaborate a little bit more. You said it's such a touchy disc that it's affecting every other part of your game. Uh, walk me through. What do you mean by that? Okay, so it's very sensitive disc. You have to learn how to manipulate the angles and the touch. You can't put a lot of power on it forehand, obviously, because it'll just burn over. So I have a few fair. I have a couple fairway drivers that are like neutral. They're not like a Firebird. So like my fairway drivers when I sidearm it. I have to learn how to be really touchy with it and just kind of caress it like my uplink and not put a lot of power on it to get that full flight. Mm. Especially on like my zone up, up shots. It's just added a lot more touch to my game for sure. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, uh, I, I, I'm glad to hear it. I honestly, when I recommended it, I did not think to myself that this was going to like, make its way into the rest of your game and have that effect. So that is awesome to hear that. Yeah. Like it has made an impact and I would definitely like, yeah, continue throwing it, continue checking it out and know that that fuse is there as a stable option in case there's a world where you're like, if you get comfortable with that, like 60% power and you're like, sometimes I just want to throw this full power, uh, get up and rip it. And I will say that I have recently found the origin and I'm finding that if you throw the origin, it's also just a great disc stock. Uh, so nope. uh, not saying that you got to run from the origin either. <laughs> uh, you could find other origins. So 
I'm here to put my foot in my mouth on the origin and say that it is it is significantly flippier than people give it, like than the numbers look. Yep. That is for sure. Yep. Uh, but definitely, definitely some options out there for you. So Sean, we don't want to take too much of your time. You're chilling in the car, chilling in the heat. So we want to say thank you for coming on and thank you for coming on again. And we really hope that uplink continues to serve you well, man. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. All right, see ya. Reminding that you love the uplink. That is, that is yeah. so fun to hear. And I totally get it because I think we get these discs in our mind and we recommend them all the time. And that's how, before I found the origin, I had a disc, the bounty that I was recommending all the time. Cause I love the bounty and I was trying to fall in love with it. And I couldn't remind myself like why I loved the bounty and I realized it's because I was trying to make it do something else. So that is super cool to hear, even Brad. Yeah, that like one bad night at league doesn't make a disc bad. Yeah, it's 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 the archer, not the arrow, usually, right, Robbie? So, and it that is also the disc that kind of o- opened my bag instead of only disc craft. So there's a special love there, and it also made me again rethink the understable slot and like my fairway drivers and it also has made me lean on fairway drivers if you recall like four episodes ago i'm like i don't even know what fairway drivers are or what to throw so no it's i love the uplink it's a great disc i don't know i'm sorry uplink thank you mvp for making the uplink we we love you uplink we're glad you exist and we have talked about it several times the envy has come up several times which takes us to our last guest for this podcast. He was on episode four. We are going to bring in the the throwing putter man himself, Mr. Ben Fabian. All right, let's do it. Ben, good to have you back. Glad you are here. Super excited to talk about probably the most popular throwing putter of the last 12 months. I should. I feel like that's an okay claim to make. Probably, yeah. yeah I would say that's probably accurate. So we're not talking about the zone. We're talking about good throwing putters here. We are talking about the, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Too much shake, too much shake. Sorry. Had to sneak that one in there. Brad, you can tell Brad's like eyebrows are raising. He's like, you did not just insult the zone. (laughs) That hurt, Robbie. That's okay. You can, you can take a pig shot later. It's totally, totally. I'm waiting for it. Now, you know, to sneak it in in another episode. Yeah. Ben. Grateful for you. We recommended the Envy as a throwing putter for you uh, yep. a couple couple a month ago, and yep. would Actually, love to hear how right is it here. how's it flying for you. Come on, nice. uh, it's uh, it's flying really well. So what I what I really like about it is that it's a little less stable than the Entropy. And so I actually had a great opportunity to use it um, the other day. We were playing in a in a league game, and. Uh, I had a shot where I didn't really have the ability. You know, it was one of those cases where you kind of have a narrow window and you can't you can't really fully extend your arm the way you would want to to be able to shape uh, a more over overstable disc towards your target. And so I needed something that was going to fly a little straighter uh, because I couldn't really get full extension of my arm. I needed something that I could just sort of toss out, and it worked perfectly. Um, so I like it as a, a somewhat less stable. It, it's still and an definitely an over, I would, I don't know, overstable is the right word, but a stable disc. Uh, yeah. But it's not nearly as overstable as the Entropy, which is kind of my go-to upshot uh, disc. But this is definitely finding a place uh, for those sorts of niche shots where I don't really have the ability to shape that Entropy's shot the way I want it. I need something that's going to fly a little straighter. Um, So it's definitely found a good place in my bag. Yeah. And I think overstable is definitely an okay word to use. I think when we use the word overstable, people often go to like crazy overstable, like a zone or a firebird or a raptor or something like that, or a destroyer. And I think it's okay to describe something as reliably going to fate. Like it's reliably going to get back and the envy definitely does that. What I really, what I loved about the NBA while I was recommending it was it's torque resistant. You can really jam on it as a throwing putter mm-hmm. and know that, like you said, it's overstable. So it's going to get back for you and you're not going to have to worry, hopefully, about it. Just like you really throw some juice and it just like sails off into the great beyond. Right. Uh, so, uh, is it the next question being, do you think the NBA is going to stick around in your back for a little while? I do. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, it doesn't fly as far as the entropy, which I also kind of like because there are times when sometimes that envy sails on me a little bit or not the envy, excuse me, the entropy sails on me a little bit. I have not seen that happen with the envy at all. Uh, so I, I, it's weird because when I first started playing disc golf, I was like, why would you want a disc that doesn't go anywhere? But now, <laughs> you know, once you get into a situation where you're kind of like, I really need to not overshoot this. Um, uh, then all of a sudden the value of, of a disc like that becomes apparent. It's not something that's immediately, uh, visible, but I like the fact that I know the envy is not going to sail on me where sometimes the entropy does. No, I, I thought, and there's another podcast we have here on the foundation podcast network that is grip locked. Uh, mm -hmm. probably the, it is the most popular one we have. Uh, and they were talking about that yesterday. Uh, Hunter is doing an all gyro challenge. I saw that, and, and I think it was the last episode, right, of this podcast. Yep. Yes. 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 So we built his bag, and he mm -hmm. talked about a struggle that he's having is he doesn't really love to throw putters, but his envy goes far enough for him that half the time he feels like he can't throw a mid-range at it because the mid-range is going to go too far. So exactly what you're talking about, Ben, of that, mm -hmm. like – when something's so good, it's like, I, I don't know that I want this to be that good. Like, I, I'm going to overthrow the basket every time by a, by a long shot. I'm okay to overthrow baskets here for that. But, yeah, when you're, like, sailing past the basket, that's no bueno. Right, yeah. So our last question, Ben, uh, is sort of looking at has this disc opened up opportunities in your game or maybe it's not the disc – it's like what the disc can do, and maybe there's another disc that does this for you. Has it opened your eyes to other opportunities or shots or throws that are available for you? Yeah, I would I would say that it has, and I, and I like the way you phrased the the question there at the end, um, because uh, I I think that, and, and I'll I'll give this this example again. I was playing in this uh, in a league game. Um, this past Saturday morning and uh, the the shot was one where uh, my initial drive had landed uh, kind of two feet behind a space where there were two trees and they're you know like yay distance apart I'm trying to kind of back up so I can give proper perspective yeah, totally but, fair yeah you know like you can't and I and you can't really get that open arm extension and it if I didn't have this disc in my bag, I would have been like, Oh crap, what am I going to do here? You know, like, what am I going to, um, do I, do I try to, to throw an Annie around it? Do I, you know, try to see if I can kind of lean out and, you know, see what we yeah. can do there. Um, both of which are shots that are not real reliable for me. Yeah. I have a really hard time throwing Anheuser anything like doing any kind of, you know, flex shot. I, I'm awful at it. I, I've I've thrown maybe three good ones in my life, and the rest have just been like <laughs> straight to the ground. Oh, I threw a roller. Oh my god, <laughs> that you know, like, totally fair. Yeah, totally fair. like five feet in front of the tee, it starts rolling. There it is. Okay, um, but this gave me, like I said, that sort of like I could just toss it without having to do a full arm extension, and I knew it's going to go relatively straight. With with a fade, but it's not an over exaggerated fade. Mm. And so I had I had a really sort of a narrow window, short distance, um, and that is something that I I tend to run into a lot because a lot of the courses around here are pretty heavily wooded. Uh, there's yeah. really only one course. Well, I guess there are two. Um, there's really only two courses are in, in my immediate area that, that are relatively wide open. All the rest of them tend to be very heavily wooded, tend to have a lot of tight tunnels. And so this is definitely going to it, it changed the way that I approached that particular shot. Yeah. Well, dude, that is awesome to hear. Uh, I yeah, I'm very grateful to hear it. Um, and just want to say thank you for being willing to come back on and thank you for trying out the disc, uh, where <laughs> I know I am Brad, I'm sure you, I can speak for yeah. you as well. Very happy to hear that it's created opportunity for you. Yeah. And thank you. we hope that it will do that for other people as well. Yeah. Thanks guy. I really appreciate it. It, it has, uh, it's helped out a lot.
Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you very much. We'll catch up with you soon. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I, I have to be 100% honest, Brad. Three for three, it sounds like we recommended, I, I guess we'll call it two and a half because the Raptor wasn't necessarily the best choice for Jason. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like the others really kind of fell in line. How are you feeling getting to hear back from everybody again? Uh, no, it feels great. I feel like we're actually helping. You know, it's, I don't really care if they keep the disc that we recommend per se in their bag. I more care about, you know, are they applying the lessons from the disc and from the field work that I did and from the advice that you gave them to help them like help like the broad spectrum of their game. So I think we're three for three on that for sure, which makes me feel much better. You know, I I understand it is called in the bag and to be fair, all of them are in the bag. So that's three for three as well. But yeah, I think for uh, the win for me is everyone, you know, Jason's thinking about the different types of shots he can throw and experimenting with different shots and subconscious confidence with that mold, which we talked about in the episode with him. We have Sean who's really like, Oh, I can pull this disc off the shelf and it's making me be more touchy and transferring that touch throughout my different discs in my bag. And he's also thinking about different shots now because he has the touch. And then, you know, we're looking at Ben, who's like, you know, he's not using the envy the way that I would per se, or maybe the way that you would, but that's okay. I think the lesson there is that still is serving a purpose in his bag and for the courses he's playing and giving him a confidence in a disc that he really needs that he didn't have before. Um, and he's just yeah. trying out something new to get that, right? So I think those are the big takeaways from everybody. And I'm just happy that they're getting takeaways to apply to their overall game. I think it's even more important to me than just the single disc recommendation. For sure. For sure. And that's, I will also say we weren't able to for schedules to align uh, and maybe we can get them on in another reunion episode. But uh, our third guest was also named Ben. Uh, Ben Sissel came on and we recommended distance drivers for him. And the desk, the disc that we recommended for him is his farthest flying disc in his bag right now. And it is in the bag as well. So uh, perfect. we're doing it there. I just, and I wanted to, we asked Brad, I asked you at the beginning, what was your biggest takeaway? And for me, the reason that we phrased that last question the way that we did is because with so much plastic that's out there, I think that I, I stand by, we're not going to recommend the right disc for every single person throughout this entire process. There are going to be people that come on. They're going to be like, yeah, that sounds good. They're going to throw it. It's not going to be the right disc for them. We've all had discs. Let us know in the comments or in a review, what has been a disc that you really wanted to love. And you really like, according to flight numbers, suggestions, you were like, this is going to be it. And it just wasn't. Uh, I know we talked about the Mantis in the past, uh, but that we can miss on the disc, but Brad nailed it. I want to make sure that we are opening your eyes to when you have a hole in your bag, this podcast isn't designed to get you the perfect disc. It's to make sure that you have all of the right shots you need to gain confidence before you even step on the tee box. Before you get to the course, you are fully equipped with everything you're going to need. So I am really relieved and relieved probably the right word. I'm excited to hear it, but relieved because as a coach, you can throw so many things out there and just wonder like, are we actually doing anything? So Brad, I am grateful to hopefully be making an impact in our sport of helping people build more well-rounded bags. And another way to build a well-rounded bag is you got to have, you got to have some good plastic and we know the best place to buy plastic is foundationdiscs.com. Grateful for the support they have for the in the bag podcast. What's new in the shop? Um, well, Ledgestone Wave 4, the final la- wave of Ledgestone did drop when we're filming this podcast, which is Tuesday. Um, but it will be, we're releasing, we're going to do a special 4th of July Freedom Weekend sale here uh, Friday when this comes out. So make sure you're checking out that. We're also going to be doing some mystery boxes, Ledgestone mystery boxes. So it's going to be like three for 45 bucks, which is not not anything you should pass on. So make sure you 100%. check out that. Yeah, that will be releasing at the time of this video as well. Um, let's see, Sky Gods will have come out. They'll probably have sold out by then, by now. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, but we have a bunch. They're beautiful. They feel great. So make sure you check out those. Um, I think all of our gyro is up on the site and live now, which is great. Uh, we're having re- we're, I think there may be some trilogy releases Friday too. So. Uh, wow. Telos uh, from EV7 just released. I mean, Robbie, it's crazy. I mean. 
there's like releases every other day it seems like right now which is these are the big months for disc golf it's going to happen but yeah um just make sure you're tuned into all of our social outlets make sure you're checking out the podcasts on the foundation podcast network check out the foundation youtube channel um you know all the media outlets that we have, please check them out. There's always something going on here, either through Foundation, through Atlas, through um, the retail store, through the uh, Charleston store we're opening up in South Carolina. That's awesome. The Creator Cup. Rob is going to be down with us. Um, Absolutely. You know, going head to head with everybody. So, Robbie, um, I, I can't tell Hunter and Trevor this, but I might my money might be on you to take this thing down. So I I will tell so you. you know. I'm, I have been working hard behind the scenes uh, to make sure my game is stepped up. So it's funny, like, because I know that uh, Hunter and Trevor on the Patreon are doing their, like, Stop Sucking series uh, mm -hmm. and trying to improve. I know I've been talking to Josh at Overthrow. He's been working on his putting, which is his biggest weakness. So I – and Molt is a baller. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I had to put my money on someone, it's Chantel. Miss Frisbee's oh, is about I to forget. show up and rock yeah. us all. So yeah, uh, I forgot about that. That I, am, I, might, I might change my bet. No offense, Rob. Hey, that I I'm with you. I'm I'm betting against myself. I'm Team Miss Frisbee's through and through. That or uh, as long as Will from Swanky isn't putting with his uh, isn't putting with harps, I think they're going to do pretty well as well. Yeah, so I I think so. Um, and hey, uh, for all the people that made it to the end of this episode. Thank you. It's a recap episode. I know we're going to get back on schedule next week. Uh, but for those people who made it to the end of this, uh, we are going to give away a mystery box, a five disc. Wow. No. All right, Robbie. Not a five disc, a nine disc. Holy mystery cannoli, box Batman. For episode Holy nine. Cannoli. Nine disc mystery box. Um, but here's what I want to hear in the comments. Um, I want to hear your biggest takeaway from this podcast. What is, mm. you know, what possibilities in your game has it opened up? What is the most valuable lesson or takeaway you've had from the podcast so far? Um, selfishly, I just want to hear it, Robbie, to make sure we're doing the right things. And hopefully it'll inspire us for future episodes and some things that we can do as well. But yeah, comment below on nine what is discs. your biggest takeaway? This is for a nine disc mix mystery box. Hey, I'm not giving it to anyone who says mids or a one word answer. Like give us, yeah. give us some juice here. Give us some meat on it. And uh, you're going to get a nine disc mystery box to one lucky person here. So leave your feedback in the comments below. Uh, we're going to be checking Apple Podcasts for this one as well. So post them on there, uh, your feedback and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps us out a lot. Absolutely. And it is it is a pleasure to bring this to you. And like I said, if when you're giving that feedback of I've learned this, but I would be more helpful for this, whatever that may be, let us know because we are constantly, we want you to improve your game. We are trying to improve our game and we're trying to improve the quality here as well. So we are excited to bring you guys in the bag every week. It's something I look forward to recording every single week and I look forward to hearing how it's going for y'all. So thank you so much. And when you find that good disc, remember if it's good, keep it in the bag. See y'all next week.